So today we're going to be talking about Israel and how the Lord would like me to speak specifically about Israel and um, thank you for bearing with me if you've watched my testimony. I couldn't move on until I released uh, my full testimony again. So now that I've done that, I can move on because there's four videos that I have to release one after the other, all very important, all very um, telling of what the Lord is saying to the body of Christ. So today we're going to be speaking about Israel and the Lord has asked me to prophesy against Israel, to prophesy against Israel. Now, before you guys start commenting in the comments section, please remember that if you've read your Bible from Genesis to Revelation, there are many prophecies against Israel. Israel is not exempt from rebuke and Israel is not exempt from being corrected. God corrects Israel constantly throughout the Bible. So please don't comment in the comments section about how um, Israel is God's chosen nation and they can do no wrong because that would be biblically unsound and biblically inaccurate of you to say that. So this particular prophecy is about Israel and I found that when the Lord speaks to me about a specific nation, he will speak to me in a language that they understand, right? So if he's speaking to me about America, he will use a uh, film and um, films that have occurred in the past to speak to me um, through that for America, because that is a, a language that Americans will understand because they are the producers of film, right? But if he's speaking to me about a different nation, he will use a different uh, way of speaking to that nation so that that nation can understand. And so this particular prophecy will be a prophecy that a Jewish person would understand if they were to come across this video because this prophecy is for them, right? And although we're watching it and listening to what God is saying from a Western perspective to gain understanding into the heart of God, we're still looking through the lens of what a Jewish person would understand. Because when God speaks to the Jew, he will use a language that a Jew will understand, right? So before I start with the prophecy, uh, the Lord is highlighting again Texas to me. And Texas is, is intricately linked with Israel. And the Lord had me uh, in a season where I was teaching a lot about water, uh, whether it was the marine kingdom or uh, cryptocurrency. Um, but there was there there is a season that the Lord is taking me through in terms of prophetic words. And this particular word for Israel is also on the topic of water right? The Lord has not removed, he hasn't lifted that um, that series, if you like, because there's a series of prophecies about water that is coming out. And um, if you watch my video on Rumble, thank you so much for everybody who commented on the previous video um, to boost the algorithm, because it was blocked on YouTube. Um, I spoke about the Mississippi River and the Ohio River, now, shout out to Beth, who sent me this about the river in Texas, and it's actually called the Red River. Now, why am I showing you this? It's because rivers have different characteristics, and they have different potentials. What comes out of a river will be different depending on the area that that river is in. And the Lord has given different um, characteristics to each river, and we are to know these things if we are to be uh, building Goshen, and if we are to be uh, commanding dominion over the land, the characteristics of water becomes extremely important. And so I thought this was really beautiful, what um, Beth, who lives in Texas, sent me. Um, 
the river is actually called the Red River. And I found that incredibly uh, specific, considering the Lord has been speaking about red and Texas quite a lot. And if you have been following my ministry, you know that I dreamt of Texas as a woman and she was wearing a red dress, right? It is a red state. They have a red river. They have a red river. The link with Israel is the red heifer. Now the red heifer is coming out of Israel. The red heifer is coming out of Texas. Apologies. So um, the uh, bull, because we spoke about bulls and oxes in the last presentation as well, the red heifer is also coming out of Texas. And the red in my dream symbolizes the blood of Jesus, that Texas is covered and drenched in the blood of Jesus, but it also symbolizes that there will be bloodshed. There will be bloodshed because of war and civil war. And so when the Lord is highlighting that there's a red river that runs through Texas, I thought that was incredible. Um, for those of you who would like scripture, uh, but the, the Bible mentions rivers throughout the, the Old and New Testament. And this is just one example in Genesis 2.10, where it speaks about the rivers that flowed out of the Garden of Eden. One of them was um, where gold would be found. I thought that was apt considering we're talking about the wealth transfer. So rivers have different characteristics and there were four rivers that were mentioned in Genesis and each river had a different characteristic. Uh, this particular one had gold that came out of it, another had um, precious gemstones that came out of it and um, the Euphrates River which is the fourth river is the one that you see here. It is on the map, it is in Iraq, all the way going up near Turkey. And this particular river, the Euphrates River, will play a great role in the end time prophecies, if you have read the book of Revelation. Because there are things that are bound in this river that uh, will only be released when the end time comes. So today I'm prophesying against Israel. And I've already showed you that Texas is intricate, intricately linked to Israel because of its production of the red heifer, which is prerequisite to what Tex, uh, Israel will be getting up to in the uh, time where they will be erecting their third temple in uh, anticipating their Messiah. And... Um, the Lord has given me words regarding the eclipse that is coming over America for Texas, um, Illinois, Cairo, Ohio, Pennsylvania in Philadelphia and New York, New York and I will release a word about Rochester which is very important that will be released tomorrow. So when we're talking about the prophecy against Israel, right, it's primarily because they have rejected God's way. They have rejected the Messiah. They have rejected doing things according to God's wisdom and according to God's will, right? So there is a rationale for why God would be against Israel because Israel has not chosen the true Messiah, which is Jesus Christ. Instead, they continue to be stiff-necked in their ways and stiff-necked in their decision-making, right? I know that there is a veil over many of the Jewish people's eyes and we are to pray for them so that the veil is removed, but that does not mean that they are exempt from correction and rebuke. God will still rebuke people who have veils over their eyes. And so, like I said at the beginning of the presentation, that the Lord speaks to certain nations in a language that they will understand. Now, he gave me a dream about Israel, and I'll share the dream with you shortly. But the dream was about a mikveh. 
and a mikveh is something that only those who are in Jerusalem or in Israel will understand what that is. I actually had to go look it up because up until the dream, I had no idea that these pools that are mentioned in the New Testament where Jesus heals people besides the pool, they're actually called mikvehs, right? And these pools are all throughout the, uh, the area that surrounded the temple, right? So Jesus was familiar with these pools, and this is where the pool of Siloam uh, was where he healed the blind man, right? There's also the pool of Bethesda that is mentioned in the New Testament, and there's the other pool where there was a cripple, and he, he didn't want to pick up, uh, there was nobody to put him in the water when the waters were being stirred. Uh, so there's lots of pools that are mentioned in the New Testament. And in English, we know it as a pool, but in Israel, it's known as a mikvah, right? A mikvah. And I had not heard of this term before my dream. And normally when I dream something for the first time, the Lord is really highlighting that I should pay attention, right? And so I had not heard of this term mikvah before. And so the Lord highlighted that when Jesus was um, healing the blind man at their pool, um, remember that he spat and put uh, a mixture on the blind man's eyes. And then the blind man had to go to the pool to rinse his eyes. And then after he had done that, he received his sight. And when the Lord was speaking to me about this particular uh, story in the New Testament, the, he was saying to me that the blind man is symbolic or an extended metaphor for Israel. Israel is blind. They are a blind uh, uh, a man because they cannot see the Messiah. They cannot see who Jesus is. So they are blinded, right? And in the same way that how Jesus healed this particular blind man by spitting on uh, mud and then rubbing it in his eyes, the same is true that would, it would need to be for Israel for them to come to the understanding of who Jesus Christ is because Israel is blind. So here is my dream. Uh, in January, I dreamt of a woman and the woman was taking a bath in a mikvah, right? She was taking a bath in a mikvah and the woman was Israel. So the woman is representing Israel. I often dream of places either being a country, being a man or a woman. And in my dream, I saw Israel as a woman taking a bath in the mikvah. And when she got out of the bath, the water drained from the mikvah. The water drained from the mikvah. Now, it's a very uncommon practice for mikvahs to drain because the mikvahs in Israel are filled with natural water that are coming from springs or that are coming from rainwater. They are filled with natural water. And for it to drain would take a supernatural event. But in the dream, I dreamt that as Israel took the bath, their water was draining as she came out of the mikvah. And so this is the prophecy against Israel. This is the mikvah that is uh, being reconstructed in Israel at the moment in preparation for the third temple. So this prophetic word was given on the 28th of January, 2024. Israel, my Israel, why have you turned aside? I have loved you, yet you have turned aside. Your mikvah was used for cleansing. Now it has been used for conversion. Israel is ready to take her seat in vain she uses the mikvah to cleanse. Israel, your mikvah is for conversion. Now she says, 
Let us ascend. The holy mountain awaits. Let us ascend. The temple items are ready. Israel, O oh Israel, your mikvah is in vain. You have turned aside. The water drains from your mikvah as the Holy Spirit is drained from you. Shema, O Israel, Shema. And then I heard audibly the words, Israel is ready. So when we're considering this prophetic word, mikvahs are normally used for cleansing before they ascend to go to the mountain uh, to worship on in the temple. Or the synagogue that's what mikvahs are used for in Israel um, another common practice for mikvahs is for conversion so if you are non-Jewish and you want to become Jewish part of the uh, rituals that you have to go through to become a Jew is to be cleansed in a mikvah and that causes you to be converted from pagan to Jewish. However, in this prophecy, what the Lord is saying is that Israel is assuming that this is for cleansing because that is their understanding of cleansing. But in the sight of the Lord, what the mikvah is being used for is that it is being used for their conversion. And what are they being converted to? What is the third temple for? What is, what are they going to do in the third temple? It's a conversion away, a departure away from the covenant of Abraham towards a covenant that is not intended by the Lord. The third temple will be used as a synagogue for Satan. So the Lord was saying that this pool that is being constructed in Israel at the moment that they will use by their own understanding for cleansing before going to the temple the Lord is saying that the the pool will be used for conversion to convert them into a new religion and a new system and a new way of doing things which is not according to the will of God. And so as the water was draining from the mikvah, water represents the Holy Spirit. So too will the Holy Spirit be drained from Israel because the closer they come to worshipping a false god or a false temple or a false uh, messiah, the Holy Spirit will be further removed from that nation. And so this prophecy is designed for Israel and it was only those who are in Israel who will understand it, that the mikvah will be used for conversion. It will not be used for cleansing. And in the dream, I not only saw Israel, I saw Israel and a big mikvah and the water being drained and next to this, I saw another woman, and she was the body of Christ. But she was in a, a Western bath, a normal bath, which you will find in um, somebody's home. And the body, the, the woman who represented the body of Christ, she was fully immersed in water. And this water, the, the key point of this is that the water did not drain. In other words, the Holy Spirit did not drain out of this particular bath. And so if you are um, paying attention, you know that they are preparing, Israel is diligently preparing for their uh, Messiah. They are diligently preparing for their third temple. They are constructing all of the items that would be found in the tabernacle that were found in the tabernacle of the Old and New Testament. Because remember, when Jesus walked the earth, the tabernacle, uh, the temple was still about. And so um, 
The menorah is currently already built and it is waiting in Israel. This is a picture of it. I found it really interesting that uh, Donald Trump has a replica of the Ark of the Covenant which was made out of uh, gold as well. This is made out of gold as well, the menorah. And the Ark of the Covenant is sitting in uh, Mar a Lago. Um, I'm not sure if this will be the exact Ark of the Covenant that will be used in the Third Temple, but it is interesting to note that there is the reconstruction of replicas that existed in the um, in the Third Temple, and we know that Donald Trump has very close ties to the Jewish people because his daughter is married to uh, a, a Jew, um, Jared is ma uh, Jared Kush Kushner. He is a Jew, and they are very pro-Israel. There's nothing wrong with being pro-Israel. The Bible says that if you pray for the peace of Jerusalem, uh, you will be blessed. Um, and so it is interesting that they are constructing the items which would be found in the Third Temple. It is also interesting that the Ark of the Covenant is um, in Donald Trump's house. Now, there is lots of prophecy uh, being fulfilled and, and unfolding before our eyes. And we know that Donald Trump was instrumental in moving the embassy from um, where it was previously, I think it was in Tel Aviv, to uh, Jerusalem in acknowledgement of Jerusalem being the sort of capital city, if you like, of um, Israel. And so the Jews were very appreciative of what Donald Trump had achieved and therefore they uh, minted these coins to commemorate his contribution towards that and, and they have compared him to the Persian king Cyrus the Great who was also instrumental in helping build the particular temple. So um, this particular prophecy like I said is for specifically for Israel and the the diligence that they have been showing in working towards building the third temple is evident in the fact that they have a menorah the pool of uh, Siloam is being reconstructed which is the mikvah they have the red heifer from Texas I am not sure if the Ark of the Covenant is exactly the same, but there is evidence that there is an Ark of the Covenant um, linking it to Donald Trump. Um, and then we have Jerusalem being acknowledged. And then there's this current war which we are experiencing at the moment, which seems to be escalating. Uh, it hasn't de-escalated. It started off with Israel and Gaza. And we've had Yemen being involved now we have um, Iraq and Iran getting involved, we have America getting involved, the USA getting involved. So there's about seven countries, at least seven countries, that are now in this particular war. And um, we know that Israel is faithfully awaiting their Messiah, and their Messiah is not Jesus Christ. It is, uh, it is going to be the Antichrist. And so it, I'm fully within biblical context to rebuke Israel and to prophesy against them for their, them doing things incorrectly. The mikvah that they are building will be used for conversion. The mikvah that they are building will be used for conversion. And for those of you who uh, think that it is not right to prophesy against Israel, please go read the book of Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Hosea and Haggai. There's lots of prophecies there. I would ask you to be respectful in the comments section 
because the Bible says to not touch God's anointed. And even though Israel might be in error, they are still anointed of God. So be very respectful of what you put in the comments section regarding Israel, because even though God might be rebuking them, it is not our place to uh, slander Israel, right? It is not our place to speak down on Israel. It is our place to pray for them, right? The Bible says to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And so again, this is the second dream I'm having, where water is draining. If you remember my, my other dream with uh, Donald Trump and the Mississippi, the water was draining from the Mississippi. Similarly, the water was draining from this particular mikvah. And so I'm going to play out with a clip about the particular mikvah that was in my dream. I thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for staying till the end. I pray this blesses you. Shabbat Shalom. An ancient site, which is sacred to several religions, continues to be excavated, revealing structures that haven't been seen in 2,000 years. The Pool of Siloam in Jerusalem is a site where Jesus is said to have given a blind man's sight. And over the past few weeks, archaeologists have unearthed a set of eight steps descending into the pool. You're looking at that there. The Director of International Affairs for the City of David Foundation, Zev Orenstein, joins us. Zev, uh, this is fascinating and really uh, unbelievable news for, and perhaps the greatest news, as they say, the good news in the Bible. But explain to us how this came about and, and, and why it's important. Well, it came about back in 2004 when, as a result of a busted sewage pipe, uh, the municipality of Jerusalem had to send in construction crews to repair the sewage pipe. But Jerusalem is not just another municipality, and the city of David, the historic site of biblical Jerusalem, is not just another place in Jerusalem. And so here you don't only send in construction crews, they send in archaeologists as well. And the archaeologists began to hear scraping and scratching. It didn't sound right. Uh, and it turned out that they found a, sit, a series of steps going back some 2,000 years to the time of Jesus uh, that they discovered led down to the ancient pool at Siloam, which is one of the most significant biblical heritage sites in all of Jerusalem with significance not to millions, but to billions. And over the last couple of weeks where the excavations have been going on in earnest, excavating a site that is about the size of two Olympic-sized swimming pools, archaeologists had discovered a series of steps that had not been seen in 2,000 years leading down into the pool. And again, you could imagine the likes of whom 2,000 years ago uh, would have been uh, going to the pool, standing on those steps. Uh, you're talking about millions of people in the time when the temple stood on the Temple Mount would have been using the pool as an ancient ritual bath. And so this is a site that as we continue digging, we will unearth, uh, God willing, the entirety of the Pool of Siloam. Such a important discovery, and just for our viewers to understand, you've got um, the, you know the the Temple Mount, the wall. You head south, and you're kind of looking at an aerial here. You head south through what was traditional City of David, and then just in the southern part of the City of David is where this pool is located. And ultimately, uh, millions, if not billions, of tourists could actually go now and walk those, uh, trace those steps, and have something that we haven't seen in two thousand years. That's right. Today, visitors coming to the city of David and, and years to come will be able not only to visit the entirety of the Pool of Siloam, but archaeologists with the Israel Antiquities Authority are also excavating the pilgrimage road, the biblical superhighway, the road that would have taken the millions of pilgrims from the Pool of Siloam at the southern end of the city of David all the way up to the footsteps of the Temple Mount, the western wall, the southern steps. Uh, we are, in fact, unearthing as we speak the most significant half of on the planet. There is no half mile that means more to more people that affirms Jerusalem's biblical heritage, not simply as a matter of faith, but as a matter of fact. And obviously living in a time where so much of uh, biblical heritage is, is being uh, questioned, to be able to be unearthing all of this uh, historical heritage and antiquity that shows that whether for Jews or Christians, uh, that you could see it, you could touch it, you could walk on it, that really our heritage in Jerusalem going back thousands of years, not simply a matter of faith, but a matter of fact being unearthed here in the city of David. And it's just incredible to imagine Zev, that, you know, when you look, the references from John 9, it reads, he told him, go wash in the pool of Siloam. So the man went and washed and came back seeing. We can read those words in the Bible and now go and stand literally at that location. What's next in this project? 
Uh, what's next in this project is to complete the excavation of the Pool of Siloam to see what uh, ancient treasures are going to be on Earth to complete the excavation uh, of the pilgrimage road. And once we finish that excavation, uh, that half mile will be among the great wonders of the world alongside the pyramids, the Colosseum. The only difference being that the pyramids of the Colosseum are a chapter of history once upon a time, whereas for the Pool of Siloam and the pilgrimage road in the city of David, the people who will visit it in a few years' time, they are this, they're descendants of the, their ancestors who share the same faith, in many cases spoke the same language, had the same customs, traditions, and festivals as their ancestors did, did thousands of years ago. These discoveries are not just a piece of history, but the continuation of our shared story here in the city of David, the place where Jerusalem began. And Zev, just in the 15 seconds left, I've got, what's this mean to you personally? Uh, it's exciting to be a part of a, of a story that's bigger than ourselves, to be a part of uh, bringing a story to life that has significance, not for millions, but for, bi for billions. It's a big responsibility, and it's also a big privilege, and the best is truly yet to come. Zev Orenstein in the City of David Foundation. Well done. We look forward to see this come to fruition. Thanks, Zev. Have a great Labor Day. Thank you. All right. Meanwhile, the second hour of Fox & Friends starts right now.